come 1st february the honorable finance minister is slated to lay the proposals before the house which would encapsulate the tax proposals as part of the annual budget the annual budget 2023 comes in the backdrop of india having entered into amrit kal which is being suggestive of india celebrating 100 years of independence and in fact it was the last year's budget which made the big bang announcement of azadi ka amrit mahotsav and india's quest for self reliance in all areas as we celebrate the amrit kal 100 years of independence with this backdrop uh, it's quite likely that the budget continues to fortify india's quest for self reliance in all areas celebrating the amrit kal having said so the pandemic and its after effect the conflict in ukraine and the global slowdown are the headwinds which the honorable finance minister and her esteemed team would have to take into consideration the multilateral institutions do suggest the fact that the growth the global outlook is going to be less than 2% in so far as india is concerned uh, the projections have been pruned from 7% to 6.8% of india of india's expected annual growth if we are able to achieve or aim to achieve a 7% growth i think in the given circumstances it would be uh, a better ask or a fair ask of course uh, there is still optimism within the government quarters that india will achieve 7% or around 7% of growth the manufacturing and services sector need to work at a very brisk pace and agriculture should con- contribute about 4% but all this is a uh, good expectation looking at the realistic situation on the ground uh, with the global fo- with the global forecast the way in towards the end of 2022 the s&p index as well as nasdaq have tumbled down the overall pessimism with regard to a slower 2023 makes the task a little more daunting in the past we have seen consolidation at fiscal level we have seen consolidation on many other fronts the government has taken some pragmatic decisions and it is expected that this year uh, would be again a year when that consolidation happens on fiscal space on personal tax front i am glad the honorable finance minister did uh, suggest that uh, understanding the concerns of middle class is something which is not uh, alien to her and therefore it's quite likely that the middle class should not be saddled with additional taxes both on the direct taxes or secondary form of taxation with increased taxation on indirect tax side uh, the optional tax regime uh, which was announced couple of years ago with regard to individual taxation has received a new form response maybe some rationalization on that front in so far as being able to claim certain deductions allowances including house rent allowance etc uh, would make that a little more attractive simplification of taxation making tax user friendly all along uh, uh, should be a short medium as a, as well as a long term objective for the simple reason that in spite of a huge population uh, we still have a tax base uh, which is pretty dismal we only have about 7% of our total population which is in tax net in one form or the other and the number of tax filers though have increased uh, but if one were to go back to one of the reasons of demonetization in terms of bringing a larger larger unorganized economy uh, into tax reporting uh, though we've had about 2 crores of additional filers and total tax filers are 
in excess of 8 crores of of entire population when compared with 135 crores of total population i think that's something which is still a cause of concern as to why we have not been able to enhance or widen our tax base the income tax department does employ a fair bit of sophisticated artificial intelligence tools and has cross section of uh, reporting uh, and uh, data points available uh, but still the tax base has not increased and therefore it puts a lot of pressure on the existing taxpayers uh, because sometimes it is felt uh, that there are targets which are set in uh, to achieve uh, by the end of the year and therefore additional taxes are sought from the existing taxpayer if we are able to widen the tax base uh, by making the uh, the optional tax regime a little more attractive uh, the way we've got corporate taxation now uh, up to 25%, 15% and 22%. Uh, similarly, if the optional tax regime for individual uh, with some user-friendly features are brought in, and if the rate is pegged around 20%, uh, we might see a little more buy-in. <clears throat> Coming to other aspects of individual taxation, I think the deductions with regard to uh, investments in small saving and other instrument uh, available under Section 80C of the Income Tax Act, which is pegged at 1.5 lakhs. There is a sense that uh, this limit should be enhanced co considering the inflation criteria and also making savings uh, more effectively channelized into the organized sector. Uh, this ask uh, is not uh, unwanted, uh, this limit should be revised considering that this has been there for a long time and the number of instruments which are enlisted for ATC purposes are so many that 1.5 lakhs of uh, limit uh, doesn't really do much. Effective dispute resolution uh, me mechanism and considering the fact that the taxes which are stuck and the areas have increased to about 16 lakh crores uh, when you look at the recent data. Now these areas could comprise of two categories, one where the matters are in dispute and the others where matters are not in dispute. 75% of the revenue which is clogged pertains to matters which are in dispute. Now if you look at the collections of 54,000 crores in BSV scheme with Vatse Vishwas and about 28,000 crores which the government garnered in terms of legacy disputes under indirect tax side. Another scheme on the annual uh, will be at least good in terms of immediate tax collection. Though the cases are not very old, they are largely cases which are one to two years old. But when you look at the success rate of uh, the income tax department in being able to only succeed in less than 10% of cases uh, when compared to the Western world where the success rate is about 66%. Uh, it will not be imprudent at this point in time for the government to bring in uh, another scheme of dispute resolution. Uh, although some may even ask for tax amnesty, uh, but looking at the aspect of morality and giving a fillip to those who are genuine taxpayers and taxpayers who've always been on the right side and rather not to disincentivize or discourage them, a pragmatic dispute resolution scheme uh, would be just fit and proper uh, to augment uh, some of the areas uh, when you look at the amount of 16 lakh crores. For corporates, I think the 25, 15 and 22 percent tax regime and the date set in uh, should get further extended uh, so that there is an incentive when we are looking at Atmanirbhar Bharat that uh, manufacturing sector should get uh, a little more encouragement uh, with the SCZ Act and its uh, overhauling still in pipeline. I think the income tax and attractive income tax rates should be a good incentive for further localization in India and in the last few months we've seen some big ticket names uh, expressing interest in uh, investing 
or setting up uh, greenfield uh, facilities in India uh, for manufacturing and even in defense sector, we have seen some interest in terms of green and brownfield manufacturing. So these uh, rates should continue. On capital gain side, I think there is a sense that there is a need for rationalization when you look at the whole scheme, which is uh, which has got a little more complicated when you have uh, 12 months, 24 months, 36 months period of determination of what constitutes long-term, short-term uh, capital asset for debt-related securities. It could be 36 months for immovable property and other securities it's 24 months for equity listed shares and equity oriented mutual funds it's it's 12 months and the rates should also get rationalized between 10 and 15 percent on an overall basis rather than looking at different kinds of rates and different uh, categorization of what constitutes uh, capital assets so uh, this this rationalization of or overhauling of capital gains tax regime uh, would uh, assist. Similarly, on the TDS side, we have uh, in the last couple of years too many provisions being introduced on the TDS uh, side with regard to deduction of tax at source. There is a fair bit of overlap uh, and uh, some, some rationalization on that front would be much required. Even looking at the aspect of digital taxation, there is a little bit of overlap in terms of TDS provisions and equalization levy and it's uh, and and also uh, the vexed issue of uh, which in the scheme of things comes first. Uh, so um, those would be some helpful tweaks uh, or clarifications if they are forthcoming uh, it would be helpful. Uh, the budget should provide a long term continued basis of ensuring a stable tax regime. And in the last few years, although the budget hasn't made radical changes, but when the amendments to finance bills are proposed, we find uh, silently uh, many things getting added in the statute book. And fair to say that in the last three or four years, uh, the income tax statute has become a little more complicated than what it was expected to be.